Please remain calm. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a very special uh, interview with our good friend Giovanni Lapari, uh, who I assume everyone here knows him best as the head costume designer of Halo the series on Paramount Plus, our mastermind behind the Silver Timeline. We're very excited to see what you have in store for us today. What was the thought process of making the armor specialized for the other Spartans instead of making them more like the basic Master Chief suit with smaller add-ons compared to the really specialized designs in the show? Um, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me over and to answer these um, very interesting questions. Um, in regards to what you just asked, um, what happened was then each of the Spartan had to have a specific skills. Banak, for example, who was in charge with the radio communication, let's say, very vaguely. And it was, it was also the stronger looking. So he had some equipment that were, you know, even if it was like a very easy things like antennas and stuff. So each of them, they had a different skills and uh, that was meant to be reflected on the armor they had. So the next question we have is, when it comes to movement and mobility, how were you able to navigate around the blockier appearances of the halo armor? Mobility was a thing. So I've been trying to, along with the makers, to understand how much we could modify with a bit of illusion, not changing too much of the design, once I had you know, the design approved, how to make these basically where to spare material and what kind of material in order to add a bit more, a degree, a one degree or two degrees of more movement of the arm, for example. So we started going into details of what material we should add in this part of the arm so it can be more flexible. And if it's not particularly beautiful to look, we hope actions and movements is, gonna, uh, is going to help there. You know, we're trying to get away with the speed and so hiding in specific spots where you may imagine, you know, under armor and legs and stuff, where material could be slightly softer, less camera friendly, but more uh, movement um, allowing, because they needed to spend many hours per day in that, those suits. And um, the restrictions, that's another thing. We spoke about restrictions. That's going to be a, a, possibly the biggest restrictions you're going to have as an actor, you know, in your life. It's not even a, a female corset that makes you not breathe. There were restrictions everywhere. So we were not trying to do a linen suit. So we were trying to, to make one very difficult thing, an armor, you know, mm -hmm. the, the easiest way to use. But restrictions were, you know, they were a big part of that. So how can we make this better? Now how can we get rid of this? There were not such a thing, how can we get rid of this? How we can make each spot easier. That makes sense. So they really married the fatigue and the well, straight away, the cast have been really into it, understanding that they were not getting away with not having it. So did you use like a, a mixed media on the armor where you would have like soft spots, um, like like maybe with like a foam or, or a neoprene and then hard spots for, for the larger pieces so that you kind of had that distribution of, of movement? Constantly. <laughs> yeah. And then more. Uh, I would never thought I was going to make an armor where the surface is the, let's say, the hardest parts where the, the coats of paint and all these would, you know, would just uh, hold the texture. And by mm -hmm. going into the levels, the thing were getting softer, getting closer to their, mm -hmm. and the suit and their body. So they were like, uh, as I said, I would never thought there was a breakdown. If mm -hmm. there was, um, like, you know, one of those images with colors tells you what material is, you'd be surprised and it goes into areas and then it becomes, you know, if there was like a, a grading I tell you which software it's hard to be so many spots of that. If there was an x-ray saying, this is the material, this is whether this is the other. And that would be on one hero armor. Then there are the, like the stunt versions used from the cast and the stunt people that were like a lot softer. So they would be less camera friendly. I know the last time we spoke, you uh, told us the story about the biggest challenge you had with uh, Master Chief being able to on his back. Um, and so I know a lot of people would enjoy hearing uh, about that, about the difficulty of getting his arm up there and to make it look easy. Oh, yeah, to be able to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
for, for the yeah for the yes. big draw the rifle off his back yeah we had a sidebar meetings on sidebar meetings on sidebar <laughs> meetings <laughs> of the sidebar meetings of the real reason why we had meetings to then find out then it's basically technically impossible mm -hmm. you should have a longer arms than the gun you're using it just <laughs> more elbows <laughs> So that was once again. It was that was managed from very clever people in general, and to understand that, let's get to the point to make these the most believable possible. Because that's going to be a big moment, you know. Well, that's it's a very, promo. Like that shot is the promo for a lot of things right before they show the title card on all the commercials advertising the series itself. Mm -hmm. He just does that, and then boom, title card. Well, it's so iconic. Yeah. Yeah. So they knew that one the thing. The other one thing was going to be the take the helmet off thing. <laughs> so they knew there were a couple of things that were need to be somehow nailed. And yes, so there was achieved in the in the you know for as much as possible physically to then for you know from that point on having a bit of a CGI help. Because that would have been a bit awkward to see Master Chief trying to get caught into his own weapon. And it would have been a different show. <laughs> A different show. Oh, avoiding, yeah. avoiding the awkward part of uh, Jesus, I, I can't do that now. I'm going to kill the other one. <laughs> You'll understand it would be different. We're having a different uh, chat today. <laughs> so yes, the help uh, help was needed. Mm -hmm. Someone behind to the CGI, you know. Oh, <laughs> someone <laughs> was off the hiccup. So was there actually like draw off the back, drop the actual physical prop and then a replacement into another physical prop it was made in a different way up to what the camera angle was oh okay so it was not always the same but there's always like a the first extraction thing that happens physically and then also the, the last part but what in between they actually find a pretty cool way just making a bit of movement with the body just to let the thing you know as i say using as much as movement Mm -hmm. you know to you know to, to heck that gun out of that position because then it was anchored somewhere right yeah. uh, so they, they used every you know movement possible to make it as simple and efficient and natural and they made it a lot more than i expected but there's like one gap that had to be filled camera trickery and a whole mm -hmm. lot of uh filmmaking movie magic someone holding it some yeah. sometimes CGI. I'm not saying anything would look because he can hide behind this master chief. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. he can hide. He's a big guy. <laughs> he can really hide. <laughs> Pablo is huge in person, and then put him in yes. armor. I can only imagine. He made it even bigger. You know. How tall do they get once they're in armor? Like, does it add like three inches or? Yeah, around around them. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know that now? <laughs> It's what you do, right? It's, good. <laughs> it's feeling, it's feeling. Yeah, around that yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. More it would have been difficult then to actually, you know, have yeah. a balance and running. But if you see these, you know, the big armor shoe, you know, whatever you want to call them, then they would go in and clip in. It's giant. It looks like an elephant uh, size mm -hmm. of it. You see it on the on a desk, it's like a third of a desk, big, you know, and then yeah. with the horror, you know, they have some shoes of the under armor that would just go back in. And well, I mean, how heavy alone was one of the boots? Because What's it that? looks like there's quite a bit of articulation in those boots, so they must be pretty heavy on their own for the mechanism. There's the material, then you use it, tells you what the weight would be, mm -hmm. right? If you use cork, or if you use plastic, or if you use rubber, rubber is extremely heavy. Mm -hmm. And rub, you know, the proper rubber thing gives you mobility, but it's really heavy. Then the combination between, you know, uh, the two, it gives you, you know, some kind of resins, a rubber thing, like a proper rubber thing. You know, it's just as like heavy as like a tire of a... Yeah, that's just a, a block of material as a, <laughs> a composite that takes up a lot yeah. less space and has better durability. We have a, another question about the, the weapon, um, but this time it's how they were attached. Were they the were using, yeah. yeah, were they using magnets on the back or? Oh, or uh, for Riz and her mm -hmm. two side arms on the yeah. sides. What do you think? I'll tell you, but what, what's the, what's, what would be your thinking? My, could... my guess would have been magnets. Yeah. Would... Yeah. Because it's seamless. My gut instinct is that there might actually be like separate thighs that are used for separate uh, different shots 
and that it's just one that's hard mounted and then there's uh, possibly no. a second one that's a magnetized one for stunt draws so that's answer next question <laughs> <laughs> oh is it actually <laughs> good job <laughs> more than i would have said uh, <laughs> Strong magnet is the thing that obviously when you need to pull it, to pull, yeah. Right? You need to see that. But for the run, we're running really fast. The magnets wouldn't have not been enough. Mm -hmm. So there were like a sections under the the gun who would have been replaced. Once again, a little unit it would have gone that either a leg piece or just one section it would have screwed in. Um, then it would have just hold the gun, you know, into place. Because and then you know, basically, I. I did the worst job than you did in describing the details of it. <laughs> combination of two. Combination of two. We have a question about the visors. Each visor seemed to be made with different methods. While all looked great, what methods did you use to create each mirrored piece? The visor is the biggest question mark in my life. How did they do that? So once again, it's very technical and I know part of it. So we changed the, the color, the color. There was a big discussion in about in regards as a viewer and not a Hello Gamer at the time, I would, I, would, I thought if I, if this thing is for gamers and not gamers, then if I look at this thing, first of all, in the first fight, you know, in the first second of the episode one, I don't know who's who. I don't even know if there's a man or woman. I wouldn't know anything what's going on for probably 10 minutes of fights or something. So I was suggesting, do we want to use colors? For the armor, you know, a very small amount of colors on the armor. So even if I don't know the names, I know there's like colors, mm -hmm. different dudes and girls, and different, which they thought about it, and then they decided three for three. Then I was going to introduce another. It now wasn't the no longer the silver team was other teams. You know, mm -hmm. they could be like thing then they might use later on over the seasons if they ever get there. So for me, it was shall we identify these two colors? But the whole conversation ended up into let's use colors for the visors. And that's the main thing. It's been decided which color was for each of them. And they have some of patch of color in the armor here and there. Mainly that. And the shape was mainly given from the shape of the, of the whole helmet. So when you look at the profile, you need to understand how much depth you want poking out or not. So the, the shape was really in proportion of the whole helmet. There is a way to give a coat of painting that makes you see fit. And also to avoid uh, as a, in a specific technique and color, but avoiding to have reflection. That was very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen they use almost like a 3D print inbuilt into the visor made of like a small silver uh, hexagons, can be anything. This, so breaking mm -hmm. something invisible, you, don't, you see it, you know, when you're very close to it, but in distance, you see nothing. All these little, like if it was metal. Yeah, a little lattice. Uh, yes. It makes breaking the reflection. Hmm. Doesn't mean there's a camera, right? But yeah. there's mm -hmm. a lot of cameras. Um, really not cool. when you get very close. Not when you get very close, you still have digital, you know, um, erasing the images. If you get too close, you'll see it, the guy on the other side. But mostly, a lot of reflection was uh, taken away from breaking this like you know like a net in between the two layers of uh, material that makes the visor you mentioned that it's a 3d printed hexagonal pattern is there like two layers of visor like basically. A, a clear and then a reflective okay basically interesting basically like in a very simple way i'm saying it i'm sure someone could do a better job that's all i can say it it's basically made of two layers of something who breaks the reflection mm -hmm. somehow works this way and the color, you know, as well, the, the paint they're able to do, it also helps that. So this one is asking about the armor and helmet fabrication process. They're asking if there were 3D printed masters that were molded and cast, or if the armor pieces were some other method, like a 3D print that was individually finished for an armor piece. It was actually a combination of two. We talk, if you're talking about helmets on his own was a, a chapter on his own. So there was like a small made in 3D print and then they made like a, and bigger ones on some of my Instagram, there are pictures of those as helmets made on the poly thing just to show to the producers what would be the proportion. And then if the helmet has always been a 3D project and then print in parts. 
whether the armor has been a combination, for example, the uh, undersuit, the vest has been like whole hand sculptured. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. Except for a few pieces put together, but all the combination things, it was easier for them to do by hand than in mm -hmm. 3D. So the 3D helps on certain scale. And for other things, they they're, feel it's more comfortable literally you reach out with your hands and to, you know, all the screws, then you're going to put into mm -hmm. the, the Under Armour head screws, you know, hexagonal. Oh, wow. Like thing, little bit. Kind of little thing. Um, so the, the, all the chest part for men and women and the Under Armour was almost completely done hand sculptured. Mm -hmm. for example whether the shoulder pieces and the legs were like uh, mostly uh, made in 3d so i understand as sculptures there's things that you can tell the machine to do it and especially if it's a replica of elements mm -hmm. and textures whether in certain areas the body still you might have you know hands with your hands you can reach that what you need uh, and then you can still scan that part and clean up mm -hmm. But the time it takes to build it can be a lot longer than do with your hands if you know how to do it. And they did that quickly. And then they scan it and made it, you know, mirror the other side and clean it up on the computer. And then there was a 3D print. And then all assembled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on material, as we said, the material that they know they can wear. So the vest and on the back, there's a big, strong zip. It's covered from the spine element. Mm -hmm. Definitely folding so over it. it on. So that's where the hidden closures are to get pull in <laughs> there you go. Good, good. <laughs> basically i believe all these things I, mean, I learned by doing those armors and and the base of everything is something you can actually wear mm -hmm. you have to be able to wear it no right? no way to, to you know get away with, without having a pair of shoes whatever they're going to be having a, a biker helmet whatever you're going to make having a you know leotard thing anything you're going to be wearing trousers whatever you have then on top of that, then, you know, you, you know, you can still wear it. If you wear it once, whatever you're going to put on top of it, it's not going to change the weight of it and the look of it. Uh, if you wear what's wearable, that's pretty much what you're going to do. And that's what we started with, you know, make sure that a person who can get in there and not move. keep him happy because being 12 hours in there, no. Yeah, but they can they move. Can yeah. They might be happy now, two years later, <laughs> so they're like, you know, D1 on featured on worldwide in Spain and having a lot of attention from all over and love and hate, which is a different form of love mm -hmm. from all over the world. It, yeah. It's a different kind of passion. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. really made a 50% of love and 50% of hate. They got it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My can't own, make everyone happy. Love is nothing. I, I know when we spoke last time, you um, talked a little bit about on the undersuit, how they had to do um, the the layers of paint on it to get the the right look, like on the forearms. And can you talk a little bit about that again? Um, we did that more on the armor. The armor. We did a several obviously tests to see what the camera would read and like it. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, what we liked with our eyes, it was not the camera was not giving that back as a believable. It were more like plasticky. Mm -hmm. So we started making uh, samples, you know, coat and uh, like a painting samples with the metal first, like paint, me metal paint under, like silver, gold, whatever you want to do. On top of what we start putting a layering, like a coat of uh, materials and texture, because that would almost reflect this mm -hmm. uh, metal underneath as if it was whatever meant to be. Yeah, exactly. give like a metal metallic undertone. And uh, that was surprisingly very interesting. What then happened, there was uh, like one issue after the other. Uh, the, the photography, indoor indoor photography was gorgeous, the armor. And it was not in outdoor. Oh, no. And I said, what does <laughs> that mean? Down, do we need to do another one for one interior? That would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, inside suit, outside suit. Armor fields, 20 armors, and they were really expensive things. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, the cloudy weather suit versus the sunny weather suit. Oh, no. Jesus, <laughs> help me that. So there was a big issue. The, the outdoor scenes were not really nice. It looked a bit mm -hmm. like a fake. So once again, the paint and a bit of filtering into photography, a combination, one of the two was not enough, then helped to, um, and then eventually call a correction. You do, but that we only know at the end of you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, what you need to do like, you're gone to holiday by then so but they they start looking into 
how to make this work. And so we find the filtering and, you know, giving it like a metal because it was like My uh, difficult to believe it was a, an impressive, intimidating thing. It was a bit like, okay, we didn't get that. So there was a lot of, a lot of process of trying because nobody had the ex- that kind of experience. Halo is mm-hmm. an experience. I don't know if you call it sci-fi. It's a, it's a halo. Yeah. You know, there's a sci-fi period and the halo one and the halos mm-hmm. one. They, they they did allow quite a bit of customization with your your yeah. multiplayer and your online stuff so you actually could customize your character so seeing the customized to the personality characters really as a richness to that um that that you like like you said the, the armor itself is a character it is a character representation of the person inside so it's, it's really nice to see the different differentiation between the thought process for each one of those developed characters and, and their selection of armor. I'm glad. It's really, as you just said, I didn't say in the right way, give a character. Mm-hmm. So I think using the elements that help the character of the, of the personality, then by having read all the scripts at that time, mm-hmm. that might help you know, the yeah. personality come out. Yeah? yeah. Knowing who they are. Yeah, you have a little bit of insight into mm-hmm. how they might think and feel about the way they present themselves. A way to build your character, if you will. <laughs> yeah, uh, one interesting thing is about uh, the, the young John, Master Chief, you know, the mm-hmm. young uh, in flashback. All of a sudden they say, they come and say, okay, how do we do this armor looking uh, prototype armor? That was the concept we had. How do we see that this armor is being, you know, John is, is young and it's, he's escaping, uh, sorry, Soren, Soren is Soren is uh, as young and escaping it. How do we do this? Because originally also John meant to have one. You know, at what stage of the project, you know, armor who's like in the earlier stage, mm-hmm. you know, we, you know, and then there was the, a lot of discussion trying to make, you know, was the, at the end of it, end up like, you know, the coat, the coating and everything. But they were like meant to be uh, marks, uh, digital marks on the armor where the pieces meant to join and they were not there yet. Mm-hmm. At some point we end up you know, saying here it should be something later on. It's not there yet. This is a prototype. It was very interesting how they were struggling themselves to find something that had never been established. So that's been Halo. There's been so nothing really. Nothing is there. It's literally we. They owned it and they mm-hmm. went back into something that never went to see how can we do this and make it once again. Under, you know, make people understanding what we're doing and. So it's really translate any concept in the easy understanding more than uh, let's make it difficult because then the next episode, you don't know what happened anyway. So you kind of uh, translate. And this is the job we came in as, you know, professional in the movie industry. To, that's what Microsoft said. Please translate that. Mm-hmm. Please make it an easy translation. Not stupid, but easy to be understood. So mm-hmm. then, you know, the, the visual really... Uh, say something but then there's the music say something and then the lines say something mm-hmm. and there's the acting so make ourselves speaking the truth of what and so this armor was very interesting because it came later on how do we do this mm-hmm. a prototype and Soren left with and then it mm-hmm. later on became you know whatever he, he made out of it yeah. and Soren's an yeah. interesting character just because of his physical disability as well as going renegade and running off with the mm-hmm. armor so yeah. I can only imagine the thought process he went through for actually figuring out how to portray him. Yeah, he Plus, didn't like wearing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He didn't like wearing it. <laughs> <laughs> it was the only he only had a portion of it. Yeah, he, <laughs> he didn't even have the left arm. He's, he's I'm telling you, yeah, and he wanted to lose the legs and everything. So it was actually a real surrender. The ones actually mm-hmm. never wanted to be a, a Spartan. Yeah. It was perfect. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I'd say that's a good segue into the character. He's like, I don't want to wear the armor. Like, literally and figuratively and in the story and in real life. <laughs> Never. No, he was, and he it was, was playing the character something. perfectly. Yeah. Something was choking it. I said, I sure is the armor choking you? Because I don't know. He's in character. He is method acting. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. But actually, he was really cast to hate that armor. He didn't want yeah. to have that restriction. Yeah. It was perfect. Was, that is good. Was he the one that suggested the jacket then to cover the arm as a cloak? No, that was the director uh, okay. that he wanted to have, um, which played well for us, Ren as well. 
to have a, a duster. He mentioned more of a duster, like, you know, a person who is like, I think it was a great choice because obviously not being big as any of the Spartans. Mm -hmm. So to not, I think the, uh, that was not said to me, but to give him a bit of a strength, if you want to give strength, usually put like a long coat for men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever size it is, they look, they have a bit of power somewhere. Yeah. Um, so I kind of said, okay, that might work. So we built this, whatever duster. Mm -hmm. Although by having that, you didn't have to wear the back part of the armor. Yeah, there's not a much smaller one. Mm -hmm. Still dying in the armor. You would do anything <laughs> not wearing that. Armor. Still choking. It's fine. <laughs> what are you choking? Next thing you're gonna have like an evening gown thing, and you see it choking. <laughs> I was just keeping going lower and lower and lower. What are you gonna be like? Yeah, that's gonna give me a whole new appreciation of all of his scenes now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the other questions that we have from chat is you slightly touched on it earlier what was the choices per character and how did you decide on like what game inspiration so i think that's uh asking more about the specific helmets and shoulders and things on the different characters like uh vanakai and riz yeah they all have different helmet shapes yeah um as I was saying, there were different time and layers of discussions that brought us to the final results. Uh, I'm not sure I can remember all in the, in the right order, but what I would um, personally started with is as a person who does not know, know much of the game, and if I want to keep myself uh, not knowing anything about the game, talking about it, because one of the boot camp we had was we want to, uh, you know, three for three, we want to the gamers be interested very much. We want also no gamers to be interested. In that. Mm -hmm. So I kept for a while this a no gamer feeling because if I was going to contaminate that, I would not know what else to, how mm -hmm. to make that appealable for people who don't know anything about it. So for me, the first thing was, if I know nothing about it and I'm starting seeing 15 minute sequence of like, or combat and fight, I would like to have something to hold on instead of seeing a fight, if I'm not into fights, right? So for me, it was the shape of them. Let's make sure we know if they're back lead, we know they're different. Because later on, we'll know the names of those people, and later on, we'll know the character when they take their helmets off. So for me, it was a, a pure shape beforehand. Then we, you know, we knew they had skills, and skills need to have a specific elements and uh, you know, mobility or, you know, all the skills that, but I found all, I found all the shapes within the, the Halo and, you know, books. Mm -hmm. So I started making four different figures, starting from Master Chief, which is Master Chief and related to it. The other three, they need to be, you mm -hmm. know, if you turn the light off and you backlit them, we know the silhouette, these mm -hmm. are different. So that was a pure, uh, simple thing. We need to know they really are different people, even if they put the helmet back on. So it was a pure thing. Let's see if you can achieve that first. And so it was not really important the game they belong to. It was more important what we're making out of those years of experience a very suitable visual. Mm -hmm. Be easy to understand. If it's clear what I'm saying, I don't know if I make it complicated concept. We want to know that they're a really different character. Later on, we'll know who they are. So a silhouette, and I literally went with my taste looking around what would make a difference between the two. And the helmet shape, you know, for Banak, a very squared one where the Master Chief is the whole different thing. So the most mm -hmm. unique, like I went picking the most unique shapes over the years. Mm -hmm. The helmet gives also the feeling of the shoulders, but that you're going to reflect that in the Banak, it's very squared almost everywhere. It's very, very massive. Blocky. You know, very blocky. Mm -hmm. Same as on the shoulder pieces. So those elements come back. And mm -hmm. same with the ladies. To then find out that they all had something to do. They had a different process to, you know, the point to process information and do different things. But that helped. The concept helped behind. The main thing we wanted to make sure and that they were recognizable feature. And we knew they were going to have a character developed over, this, over the episodes. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much a very visual but not with that concept, you know, mm -hmm. it was not just an image just because. But we want to make sure someone who doesn't know anything about it says, okay, it looked different. Let's see if it's true. Let's see if an episode two or something happened. Really to 
have people be interested in uh, and also whoever knows the game is trying to understand because all these belong to the history of Halo. Mm -hmm. Each piece of it belongs. There's nothing really invented. The way it's been assembled is the game, is the yeah. show. But all these things exist. And as much as you know, as much as you see, you know, the more you will see. Yeah, yeah. You recognize that thing from that game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The For us, it was not important to shuffle just to make everybody crazy. Eventually, that result but was more like let's make uh, I, let's give identity to the silver team, something easy recognizable without knowing the whole history. Yeah. Is there any last little tidbits that you'd like to share with the folks of the four hundred fifth and your fans out there? I'm not sure at this moment, but I, I really um, I really appreciated the, the production of Halo. Not even during the production, but also afterwards with you guys, because you make me go back to very challenging memory that now I can see with the distance and mm -hmm. laugh about it. And it's almost like I have nobody to share with because it's been a, such a, an important um, uh, production and experience that I will pretty sure it will last as one of the most important ones for several reasons. Um, then going back, it's something that I do appreciate doing it. And it's especially with you talking to you about it. And um, this is one thing I, I'm happy about it, and I had the chance twice to, to go through that memory. Mm -hmm. you. So um, you can write me, and I'll have an answer for you, especially for you, anytime, anything. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. We thank tried you to so get much. to everyone's questions, but I'm sure there's always going to be more that the community has. Mm -hmm. so. Write me, and I answer back. Yeah. We'll do this for and yeah. We have your Twitter and your Instagram so <laughs> that everyone can find you online. So. Please. Uh, if there's please. anywhere else that you'd like to tell people to see your work, please do. Mostly, I mostly do Instagram, just okay. um, be focused on one. But uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing all your knowledge and experience. It's, it's, it's always fun to see the other side of a show to actually appreciate the production and the effort that goes into the presentation. Thank you. I appreciate that too. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank, thank you very, very much. much.